Hello, everybody. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. We know your time is very valuable, so we'll make this as brief as possible. And we thank you guys for spending some time with us, and you guys are definitely considered a part of our digital family. We sit around this digital table every night, and we read um, you know, things that to us are extremely exciting, and I hope they're exciting to you guys. And they're exciting because it brings hope for the world to come this world that we're in right now is kind of a drag it's kind of a bust um the big evil cobra commander guys have taken over and you know for those with eyes to see and ears to hear it's it's getting treacherous out there and you know we're in a lull right now probably before the storm and we all need to be preparing for this and you know for a lot of us the only thing that is going to get us out of where we are at is the hand of our creator right and there was an exodus before this and we are promised an exodus now and so when we have faith that is able to move a mountain and we know that we can move this mountain by simply saying move then that is the kind of faith that we're looking for and our creator is definitely looking for those who without a shadow of a doubt know that he exists and not only that he exists but that he he left us with instructions, guidelines, beautiful guidelines, wonderful guidelines, things that will make your life shine, things that will make keep you out of trouble, things that will make sure things are just and righteous. And if the world lived and existed under these kind of rules, the Torah, which is, means the way forward, it would be a righteous place. And it would be a, a world where we would take evil and toss it outside the gates and chuck rocks at it because we would want to exist only in a world that is pleasing to our creator. And so that is the world that we are going to. And that is why there is hope in all of this. And this is why we are supposed to write these commandments of Yahuwah upon our hearts, minds, and souls that we are unable to sin against him because when we do, it breaks us and it will crush us and we will not allow that to happen. So we are in Genesis 44. Does anyone remember what has happened since then? Can anybody give us a quick lowdown? So Where are we at we to this point? Adam and Eve, we have Noah, we have the flood, we have the Nephilim, we have Abraham, we have all his his roots, how he left, we have his, we have Sodom and Gomorrah, then we have y Abraham, this is his son, Yitzhak, how he has sacrificed his son, and then he marries his wife, has two twins, and they're named Jacob and Esau. Jacob is the uh, chosen one, Esau is the one that went off and disobeyed all the commands, and then he has all these kids, and the, his kids sold off his youngest into slavery. Yeah, and let me, here's something fascinating that I was reading in Hebrews today is, and I'd never heard this before, but it, it says that Abraham had the faith that Yah would bring his kid back to life. So he's like, okay, I'll just cut, I will, I will cut, kill this kid because our creator has promised that all my generations would be as numerous as, as the sands of the sea. So if he is good to his promises, then if he sacrifices him and shows him the faith, then he ha he believed that, that he would raise his kid. I, I thought that was great. I, I don't know where they actually figured that out or how they knew this, but I guess somebody down the line said, hey, you know, Father Abraham thought he was going to come back. All right, Genesis 44.1. And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth. And put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, and his grain money, and he did according to the word that Yosef had spoken. Now, we didn't get into this. What's happening right here? We have the 12 tribes of Yisrael, literally, in the kid form. They are all in Egypt. They're all in Mitzram. They're all getting food. They are all, they've bowed before Yosef, Joseph. Um, and he, what is happening right now? What, what is, what are we getting ready to see? And how, this is the second trip back to Egypt. Years later, they had Shimeon, Simeon in shackles or in prison for, for, for what we know. And what is what is happening right here? So basically, he is basically setting them up. He's basically going to have them come back, which we're going to read all what happened. Yeah, when he came back, he brought Benjamin with him, right? And so all of the kids are there at this thing. So that is where we are at, and so we're continuing on with that. And if you guys haven't seen the previous ones of these, um, take a look at them so you guys know where we're at. Verse 2. And put my cup, and this is Yosef, to his, his servant guys that are there. 
Oh, am I in three? Okay. And so basically, yeah, that's the setup is two. Three, as soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses. And they went, and, and when they were gone out of the city and not yet far off, Yosef said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when you do overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Is not this it in which my Adonai drinks, and whereby indeed he divines? Ye have done evil in so doing. And he overtook them, and he spoke unto them these same words. And they said unto him, Wherefore says my Adonai these words? Far be it that your servants should do according to this thing. Behold, the money which we found in our sacks, mouths, we brought again unto you out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out of your Adonai's house silver or gold? With whomsoever of your servants it be found, both let him die, and we also will be my Adonai's bondsmen. And he said, Now also let it be according to your words. He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground, and opened every man his sack. And he searched, and began at the eldest, and left at the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. They rent their clothes, and laid at every man his ass, and returned to the city. And Yehuda and his brethren came to Yosef's house, for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. And Yosef said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? Know ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? And Yehuda said, What shall we say unto you, my Adonai? What shall we speak, or how shall we clear ourselves? Elohim has found out the iniquity of your servants. Behold, we are my Adonai's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup the cup is found. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean, guys, right here? He says, we are your... Um, he says, Elohim has found out the iniquity of your servants. What does he mean by this? Uh, I thought he sold his brother to slavery. They're talking about that because, I mean, during this entire time when they were getting locked up and messed with by Joseph in Egypt, they were like, this is our fault. We should never sold the boy in slavery. Elohim is cursing us for this. And now he's like, this is what it's got to be. We are... Uh, getting rolled now because we sold the kid into slavery. Our guilt has caught up to us. Yeah, this is an amazing story. Um, <clears throat> where am I at, Nicole? 17. 17. Thank you. And he said, Far be it that I should do so, but the man in whose cup, but the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you in peace unto your father. Then Yahuwah came near unto him and said, O oh my Adonai, let your servant, I pray you, speak a word in my Adonai's ear, and let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are even as Pharaoh. My Adonai asked his servants, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? And we said unto my El Adonai, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother, and he, his father, loves him. And you said unto your servants, Bring him down unto me, that I may set my eyes upon him. And we said unto my El Adonai, The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. And you said unto your servants, Except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall see my face no more. And it came to pass when we came up unto your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Adonai. And our father said, Go again and buy us a little food. And we said, We cannot go down. If our youngest brother be with us, then will we go down. For we may not see the man's face, except our youngest brother be with us. And your servant, my father, said unto us, Ye know that my woman bore me two sons. And the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces. And I saw him not since. And if ye take this also from me, and mischief befalls him, ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to Sheol. Now therefore, when I come to your servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life, it shall come to pass. When he sees that the lad is not with us, that he will die. And your servant shall bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to Shoal. For your servant... Okay, and, and who? what's Shoal, folks? Uh, grave, the death. It's the it's the place... Waiting where, room. It's a waiting room, yeah. It's like a... Uh, well, what does it say here? It says... Uh, the, the world of the dead. The world of the dead. As if a subterranean retreat includes its accessories and inmates. And I believe we actually go to a good part of Shoal. Um, if I read this correctly. Okay, verse 32. For your servant became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, If I bring him not unto you, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. Now therefore I pray you, let your servant abide instead of the lad, a bondsman to my Adonai, and let the lad go up with his brother. 
For how shall I go up to my father and the lad be not with me? Lest perchance I see the evil that shall come on my father. So what is happening here? Um, so basically the entire thing, he says that he became, like his life is for this kid's life. If he loses this kid's life, he loses what his life. What is Yosef doing to these people? He's proving them to see if they have changed their ways. Have they, they still hate the ones that are loved more? Have they, uh, yeah. have they improved themselves as human beings? Yeah, what is another word for proving He's, he's testing? testing, yeah. He's testing them to see if they're same the, the same ruthless people that dropped him in a, in a hole and uh, you know they, they him beat, and beat and beat him up along the way. You know they they were like ruthless. Okay, uh, forty four. Let's head on to the next one. Okay, forty five. Then Yosef could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried because every man to go out from me, and there stood no man with him while Yosef made himself known unto his brethren. And I'll stop here because prior to this, this wasn't just a um, uh, Yahuda going to them and saying, hey, you know, I'm sure to there prior to this, there was a huge thing where this is where they killed all the pregnant women in, in Egypt. Pharaoh went to Yosef and said, you got to deal with these people. You they're 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 destroying us. We don't know who these people are, but there's they're something there's something funky with these people. You go deal with them now. And so he got, Joseph got into a little bit of trouble, uh, hot water. I mean, and, and literally, you know, every woman miscarried in, in Egypt that day. And so that is, you know, <laughs> there's going to be some crying and, and all sorts of stuff. Okay, so verse two, and he wept aloud and the Mitzrayim and the house of Pharaoh heard. And, and of course, after he killed all the kids and all this crazy stuff, um, they were all like listing in like what is going on. There's a family feud in the middle of this and it's bringing down the house. And Yosef said unto his brethren, I am Yosef. Does my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him for they were troubled <laughs> at his presence. Yeah, wouldn't that be? Yeah. Surprise. 15 years. And he's and, like that same guy. And it's, you know, this dude is going to, now you've fallen into the hand of the guy that you tossed in the whale, right? He I owned mean, you now. <laughs> yeah. This wasn't just a little tiny whale. This is a whale this dude could not crawl out of. So it's not a good place to be. Um, and Yosef said unto his brother, come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Yosef, your brother, whom ye sold into Mitzrayim. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For Elohim did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years has the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there are, shall neither be earing nor harvest. What does it say in yours? Earing. Plowing. Plowing. Okay, yeah, it says earing it or harvest. It's really hard. It, it's, it's translators, I don't know. And Elohim sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Things happen to us in our lives, folks. Things happen and we do not know why, but later on we figure them out. And this was 15 years in the making. This was sold into slavery. This was tossed into prison. This was uh, um, left left for dead, but Yah had his hand in the life of Yosef. And that is the power of this Torah, is the blessings that come with being in the palm of the hand of our creator and having him on our side. And we're not going to have him on our side when we are going against his law, statutes, and commands. All right, where are we at? Sorry for the rants, folks. Uh, eight. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but Elohim. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and a dawn of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. Haste ye and go up to my father and say unto him, Thus says your son Yosef, Elohim has made me a dawn of all Mitzrayim. Come down unto me, tarry not. And you shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near unto me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. And there will I nourish you, for yet there are five years of famine, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that is my mouth that speaks unto you. And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Mitzrayim, of all that ye have seen, and ye shall haste and bring down my father hither and he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept and Benjamin wept upon his neck moreover he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them and after that his brethren talked with him and the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house saying Yosef's brothers are come and it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants after everything was done he's like oh thank oh, goodness they're yeah. actually family oh, he's, he's probably like turned to Elohim he's like oh thank Elohim oh, you know, this guy stopped family feuding and killing us you know, so, there's, 
I mean, if there was, I don't know how many people, there's probably millions of Egyptians and probably 50,000 pregnant women. So there's probably 50,000 kids that died. And so anybody that was from zero months to nine months uh, were probably being delivered. I mean, they heard it. And they shrieked. And there was more of the family feud prior to that because the sons of Yosef, um, Manasseh and Ephraim, they went and they fought with uh, Judah. Judah. And the, see, there was power. There's something funky with the, the children of Abraham's kids, right? They have inherited some sort of Elohim supernatural power, and they are they, it runs in the family because when these two families started battling it out, normally like Yahuda or whoever it was would be able to totally dominate an average person. And they that's how they were able to like take out entire cities, like thousands and thousands of people and kill them all. Um, they had some sort of supernatural power. And so when they start fighting each other inside of these chambers, it was like, uh, you know, they, they it neutralized their powers and they're like, wow, this dude, this must be our family. And they figured this stuff all out. But you don't get that unless you read like Jubilees and Jasher and, and things of that nature. All right. 17. And Pharaoh said unto El Yosef, Say unto your brethren, This do ye, lay your beasts, and go. Get you into the land of Canaan. And take your father and your households, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Mitzriam, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded, This do ye, take you wagons out of the land of Mitzriam for your little ones, and for your women, and bring your father and come. And also, regard not your stuff, for the good of all the land of Mitzriam is yours. And the children of Yashrael did so. And Yosef gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh and gave them provision for the way. To all of them he gave each man changes of raiment. But to Benjamin he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of raiment. It was probably huge amounts of money. So, I mean, he basically, it's, he forgave them, but he still uh, snubbed them, right? He yeah, uh, made he them still, lesser. He still gave Joseph the coat of many colors. Perhaps there was a little... Uh, <laughs> Anger, Still a little bit of uh, bitterness. Yeah. Also, on a side note, uh, Pharaoh during the whole fight, there's a he has a thing that's seventy steps up to his throne, and it's a pretty tall thing. So when uh, Joseph screamed, he like shook the whole ground and shook him down the stairs. He like flipped all the way down to the very bottom of the stairs. So and, and something else about those seventy stairs is every one of those stairs meant a language, and so when the people were walking up to Pharaoh. If you knew five languages, you go up five stairs, and Pharaoh would come down and talk to you. You would never rise to the 70th st uh, stair unless you were able to speak all 70 languages. And that is where an angel of Yah came down and gave, like, some super education to Yosef. In one night. In one night. And so, you know, if you're... Speed if, learning. Yeah, speed learning. Don't ever underestimate the power of Yah. He's, he's the uh, alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, and he is ultra powerful. Nicole, cool. where am I at? 23. Thank you. And to his father, he sent after this manner ten asses laden with the good things of Mitzrayim, and ten she asses laden with grain and bread and meat for his father by the way. So he sent his brethren away, and they departed, and he said unto them, See that ye fall not out by the way. And, and what is what is that? What is the saying your guys' Do not quarrel along the way. Yeah, right. And you're so, going to play the blame game. Yeah, absolutely. This because your now fault. they got to deal with pops. Hey, Dad, right? we lied to you. Not like only did we lie, we years. deceived him. Every one of them deceived him. Every one of them. And I would be. lost people of his household because of it, too. Billa or Zilpha. One of them died. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because right. they were so sad about it. Right, wasn't it Zilpha? I believe it was Bill. I believe it was the one from was Rachel's Bill. site. Yeah, Rachel's right. hand. So, so he was so. Um, Yaakov, Jacob, was so sad that he, he just he would not be comforted. Dinah died as well. Right. During that time. Right, so I love having Nicole here on this, this table here. So because of the grief and because of the agony that they had, this, I mean, these these brethren, they sat around and watched an entire family get destroyed. Like this, not only did they have the premeditated crime, they had the actual crime, then they had the cover-up, and the cover-up is always worse than the crime. And because, you know, in the in the in their crime... They only they potentially murdered one person. They had blood on their hand, but in the cover up of this crime, they lost wives. And I mean, when I would, I don't even know what I would do with you people. I don't even know. They would be lashings over your old backs. Just that's why because. they didn't end up with any of the blessings. Yeah, that's why they didn't end up with any it's of like the two blessings. Of them. Yeah, <laughs> the rest of you. The rest of them, like you're cursed. You're cursed. You're cursed. You're cursed. You're blessed. You're cursed. You're cursed. <laughs> yeah, the rest of the rebels, you can have nothing. Nicole, where am I? Twenty. 
24. Well, we're so at 25. 25. Uh, and they went up out of Mitzrayim and came into the land of Canaan un unto El Yaakov, their father, and told him, saying, <clears throat> Pops, Yosef is yet alive, and he is governor over all the land of Mitzrayim. And Yaakov's heart fainted, for he believed them not. So, yeah, this is a good way to give an old man, a, like, a, a heart attack. This is a <laughs> you guys totally have raised blood pressure. have a stroke out of this one. Oh. That's his life that his heart stopped beating. It could very well could. 27. And they told him all the words of Yosef, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Yosef had sent to carry him, the Ruach of Yoakov, their father, revived. And Yashrael said, I'm going to shoot all you boys. No. <laughs> and Yashrael said, I'm not adding to or taking away. That was a joke. Yashrael said, it is not enough. Yosef, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. And I would say his, his happiness is going to trump his... But, I mean, it, it, he'll never he trust be, his kids again. Yeah. Ever trust his kids again. I mean, he's on his way out. He's, he's dead. Yeah. But he's not dead for a little bit longer. Yeah. So, so in, uh, in this translation, he goes, enough. My son is still alive. Let me go and see him before I, like, he was done. He's like, all right, you stop talking. You ruthless 11, 10 others. He's like, stop talking. Let's go. Like, I wonder if any other family members figured this out. You know, it's like, someone had to figure this out. Right? Benjamin, maybe? Well, all the wives. Here's a gig. is The wives probably all knew this. So, like... All the kids all had wives. All the wives, I mean, some dude's going to be sitting in there, what they call pillow talk. And they're like, oh, by the way, you know, we tossed Joseph down the whale. I'm not what? sure you about this now. You, you did what? Yeah, you know, it wasn't really my ideas. We got, you know, and they, it was Judas. Yeah, but anyway, they, they, everybody probably, but Yaakov would know about this. And it, at some level, he may have figured it out or not. I don't know. I mean, Maybe he not. probably found out, like, I mean, in uh, Joshua talks about how. They, like, found some wolf, and this wolf actually started speaking to him in, like, their native language. Like, I didn't kill your kid. Your kid's still alive somewhere. Yeah, because he went, I mean, this is part of the whole curse of, of them lying to this. Is he, You know, he started trapping. He thought an animal took his kid. So they went and started, he trapped this mother wolf. And, again, the power of Yah and the craziness of Yah is that this wolf spoke and said, Hey, you know what? My kid's gone, too. I'm only simply out looking for my kid. I didn't touch your kid. Nobody's touched your kid. Not us. And so, it, it's crazy. Yah's ways are crazy ways. Okay, are we on 46? Yep. All right, so we'll finish this off. This will be the last one. We'll keep these at three. Oh, we actually, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. So, the next time, next time we'll do four, four and get out of there. Okay. And Yashrael took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the Elohim of his father, Yachek. And Elohim spoke unto Yashrael in the visions of the night and said, Yaakov. Yaakov. And he said, here I am. And he said, I am El, the Elohai of your father. Fear not to go down into Mitzrayim, for I will there make of you a great nation. I will go down with you into Mitzrayim, and I will also surely bring you up again. And Yosef shall put his hand upon your eyes. And Yaakov rose from Be'er, up from Beersheba. And the sons of Yashrael carried Yaakov, their father, and their little ones, and their women in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods, which they had gotten in the land of Canaan, and came into Mitzrayim, Yaakov and all his seed with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters, and all his seed brought he with him into Mitzrayim. And these are the names of the children of Yashrael, which came into Mitzrayim, Yaakov and his sons Reuben. And I, we'll go over these in, in English too. Um, Reuben is who? Reuben. Reuben. And, and who's Yaakov? Jacob. Jacob. Yaakov's firstborn. And the sons of Reuben... Kanak, Enoch. Enoch. And Palu. Uh, I think it's Palu. And Ketzron. I think it's, that's how you say it. Yeah, Ketzron. And Karmli. Karmi. Karmi. Hey, I got him. And the sons of Shimon. Shimon. Who's that? Uh, Simon. 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 Shimon. Yemiel. And Yamian. And Ohad. And Yakin. And Zokar. And Shaul. The son of Kenanani woman. And the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Meriri. And the sons of Yahuda, Er and Onan, and Shalak, and Peretz, and Zerok. But Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Peretz were Ketzron and Kamil. And the sons of Yisachar, Tolar. And who's Yisachar? Yisachar. Yisachar. Uh, and the sons of Yisachar, Tola and Pu'ah. And Yov and Shimbron. And the sons of Zebulun. Who's Zebulun? Zebulun. Zebulun. Why is everything totally different, right? And they have here Zebulun. So Zebulun. But Zebulun. Oh, it's like an E to me, man. Yeah. And the sons of Zebulun, Kirid and Ilion and Yakiliel. 
I don't know if I'm saying this right. I'm trying. These are the sons of Leah, which she bore unto Yaakov in Para Aram with his daughter Dinah. All the souls of his sons and his daughters were 30 and 3. And the sons of Gad, Ziphion and Kagri, Kagi, Shuni and Etzbon, Ere and Er Arodi and Are. Lee, sorry, my battery's dying, folks. One second, early. And the sons of Ashur, Yimna and Yishva and Yishvi and Beri Ah and Serok, their sister, and the sons of Beria and Kevor and Malik El. How would you guys like some of those names? I don't know, man. I don't know if I, I can feel like yeah, I feel like in uh, Jerusalem and Hebrew, I'd be like pretty uh, Probably, okay. normal. Yeah. Hick, in, Hick, in Hick, English. Hey, Hick, shiver, shiver. <laughs> but it doesn't work down here. So it's like like if I call you Jaden no, down in, in Spanish-speaking countries, what do they call you? Higher than Jared. I get whatever, whatever a lot can, of Jared. Whatever they can decide to mumble out, they can't figure it out. Well, how is that possible that there is a J for Jesus Christ? I don't know, man. Well, there it, it's not I mean, because yeah, he's a Hebrew man, and so it, names don't translate like that, right? Jason, Jaden, Eli. Uh, <laughs> what do they call you, Eli? Ellie. Ellie. He doesn't like it, but that's what it, it says, Eli, and that's how they sounded out. So here we are. Okay, we're at. I'm sure if you call 18. out to Jesus Christ, hey Jesus Christ, hey, and they're like, he, he won't look around. He just keep walking. Like he probably look around. He was someone screaming. All right, so him. so I'll, let's let's go into that real quick. If if you do not know the name of the Messiah, what then? Are you are you on the way to hell or what I is your say he says depart from me I never knew you if you don't know the, if you don't know his name you don't know who the person is but most people will not know his name most if you people are will not trying to keep the Torah you are trying to do his will but you don't know his name I feel like he will uh, have leniency on that you you did you're doing your best you never learned his name but if you're sitting there keeping the Torah I mean but along with keeping the Torah you're gonna look into the Hebrew things you're gonna figure out Yeshua you're gonna figure out the names you're not just gonna sit maybe. there. maybe. Maybe I mean you, you you would hope so, but I mean I guess the first it, it's it's a mess. But uh, like in uh, Spanish, when you start a conversation and you want to start with people, you talk, you say like Jesus Christ, right? You can't just go off and say Yeshua died for you. Look like who is that? You have to like explain yeah. them who it is. Yeah, and uh, so we're saying Jesus, hey, hey, Zeus, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I mean, and and that's the problem is it's we're literally saying the son of Zeus, and so you know if the joke's on us, we should probably Acts four twelve says there's only one name under heaven by which man may be saved. If that is the truth, like if that is if that is the hardcore truth, and there it doesn't go any way other than that, if we are saying the name other than that, it's a problem because it says there is no other name under the Shemaim which man may be saved. Sorry, I've got some distractions here. Okay, where are we at, Mystical? Eighteen. Eighteen. These are the sons of Zilpha, whom Lavan gave to Leah his daughter, and these she bore unto Yaakov, even sixteen souls. Whoa. Yeah, well, that's a lot of kids. <laughs> the sons of Raquel, Yaakov's woman. Who's who's Raquel? Rachel. Rachel. And uh, who's who's Rachel and Leah? The twins. The our, stars ca- our cows. Yes, oh. we have two twin cows. We have two twin cows. They're, they're not twins. Twins. They're they twins. look they alike. They look a lot alike, but they're not twins. I don't think they're twins. No. They're the same age. Same they age. look the same age. Yeah, yeah. same age. So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> who's Rachel and Leah? This is a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> our Rachel and Leah. <laughs> Uh, Nicole, I'm so sorry. Folks. 19. 19. The sons of Raquel, Yaakov's woman, Yosef and Benjamin. And unto Yosef in the land of Mitzrayim were born Menasha and Ephraim. And Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore unto him. Now that daughter of the Potiphera, she probably got converted. But I mean, the, the priest of On, On is a god. was like a pagan deity for yeah. the... Uh, yeah. Egyptians, the Mitzrayim. That was a big thing because... He the, was a priest. He was like a high priest. Yeah, like, a, like, like he probably like was a very high priest in some sort of like weird blood-letting yeah. ritual. So them having, giving Joseph the daughter of this high priest was like a huge thing. Joseph so, was like, oh man. Joseph was like, hey, we got to talk about some of the stuff. Let's, but I mean, uh, y'all was like, uh, y'all and, somehow let his, his kids got blessed, through, right? right? His kids were all blessed and up strong, even though they were from like the pagan <laughs> It's like, I mean, it's it goes not, to show you can, uh, you can change your ways even if you grew up in a satanic even, cult. Even, even if, if your you, dad is a bloodletting satanic priest. You don't have on. to live the you don't have to live that life. <laughs> y'all y'all has a plan for you. Like if you turn to him and you follow him, you can completely change your life around. Absolutely. Well, it's like Ephraim that screams like Simeon and Judah. It's I, I think it's it was Manasseh. Manasseh. The old one Manasseh. Manasseh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they went and fought was, the rest of the yeah, kids. Bounced the rock off back of Judah's head. Yeah, he he did sell one of them. Okay. Um, 
20. And unto Yosef in the land of Mitzrayim oh, were sorry, oh, 21. 21. And the sons of Benjamin were Bela and Bekar and Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ekei, and Rosh, and Mopium, and Kupchupium, and Ard. These are the sons of Rachel, which were born to Yaakov. All the souls were 14. And the sons of Dan. And who's Dan? Dan. Dan. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Just seeing if you guys are awake. Who's Dan? Dan. Uh, <laughs> the son of Jacob. Uh, uh, that sounds like an English name, but I guess Dan must have fit in, right? All of a sudden, we have all these names. Dan. Uh, we got like these crazy Asnef, names. Asnef, Ephraim, Potiphera, and then we got Dan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then we got Kush, Kushim. Poor Kushim. Man. Yeah, Dan. That was simple. Um, and the sons of Naphtali, and who's Naphtali? Naphtali. Naphtali. And what, what's special about Naphtali? He's really fast. He's, he's, real fast. he's, he's like, yeah, he's like a legacy or something about running. Gazelle. Like a gazelle. He, they had a, they said that somewhere in Jasher that he could like run over the tops of corn stalks or something. He was so fast, which is like, uh, so yeah, yeah, they wouldn't break. Yeah, they wouldn't break. Like he you just, could take day trips into like hours or something. Yeah, they, made it quick. They, these were the power of Yah, so never underestimate it. All right, and the sons of Naphtali, Yaxil and Guni. Is that what you say, guys? Guni? Guni. 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 Yeah. And Yetzer and Shilium. I just couldn't believe the guy's name is Guni. <laughs> <laughs> these are the sons of Bila, Bila, which Lavan gave unto Rakah, his daughter. And she bore these unto Yaakov. All the souls were seven. All the souls that came out of Yaakov unto, into Mitzrayim, which came out of his loins, besides Yaakov's sons, women, all the souls were three score and six. How many is that, folks? Six, 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 six. six. So we had 33 something there, and now we have six, six, six. What's really going on here? I don't know, man. What's really going on? Something okay. suspicious. <laughs> Something smells fishy. Okay. Um, and for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, uh, I, I will briefly drop into this. So 33 is a number of a satanic group of people called the Freemasons. And most of the people in the world have no idea who they are. And even if you did know who they are, you would think they're a bunch of dudes that had a grandpa group that dr drove around on little trikes with little hats on in circuses. <laughs> and everybody sh cheers for them, right? And these people are all out there. Uh, hanging out with the handicapped people and doing all great things. Well, at the end of the day, these guys are extremely ruthless, extremely evil, and they put 33 everywhere. And so they love the, the number 33 and love the number 66. All right, so, not all of them are evil. Most of them are just into level three, and they don't know any better, but there are a lot of evil ones. Yeah, if you... We're, we're going deeper. I'm sorry. This is a rabbit, I just had to clarify uh, that. Not everyone knows what they're doing. Most people that join the Freemasons go to level one, two, or three, and if you are have an evil soul or evil spirit or you're like <laughs> like a hopeful Satan recruit, then they will take you from level three up to level 33 and beyond. And at the top of level 33, you're, they figure out their God is Lucifer, right? So these people are anti-God and they're doing this. I am so sorry we even went there. Nicole, where are we 27. at? 27. Let's never do that again. Let's finish this. <laughs> and the sons of Yosef, which were born him in Mitzrayim, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Yaakov, which came into Mitzrayim, were three score and ten. And he said... Oh, what? 70. Sorry. Oh, okay. Nicole, thank you. And he sent Yahuda before him into, unto El Yosef to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen, which is a really nice spot. And Yosef made ready his chariot and went up to meet... Yashrael, his father, to Goshen and presented himself unto him, and he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Yashrael said unto El Yosef, Now let me die, since I have seen your face, because you are yet alive. Why does this guy say, Let me die? Because his life is going to die in peace now. He, his soul is content. He's yeah. happy. He's seen his son again. He had years and years and years of tragedy. I think of about weeping 50 years, because his kids are like about, I think, 10 or maybe 20 years old. 15, and Benjamin 15, has. 15, right? How many well, years? well, that was when two of that, but he has kids. At point, his kids are all fighting. Judah. His kid was tossed in the whale. Joseph was tossed in the whale. 14. 17, 17. Or 17? 17, right? Okay, and he was they 15 spent years. 13 years with between Potiphar and the jail. And the jail. They went to. He was about 30 years old when he went to Pharaoh. This is the second year of famine. Second right. Year. Yeah. So it's been. But, but they. But they. Like so Manasseh is like, like nine. About 40 years. But they had the seven years of. Good. Good. Oh right. So he's at least 40 something years old. Yeah, he's about Manasseh is like. Manasseh like ten, Manasseh nine ten, years old. Beat Manasseh fought, the fought, fought the adults, right? Wow. And power you So these little kids talking rock to the adults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, and that's what he did. He actually yeah, chucked he a bounced rock, a rock off the back of Jews. Right, and, and and where these guys were invincible, a normal rock wouldn't do anything to these people. And so, however, he like split his wig. It he was like, a bad deal. He like crushed the rock into dust. Right. Yeah. It freaked everybody out, didn't it? Okay. Like, this has got to be part of us. It can't be. This right. Is, this they, is the, the family. And I hope we're not spitting all you guys out there. This We're all over the place. This is I'm probably too many cups of coffee. Where are we at right here? <laughs> 31. 31. And Yosef said unto his brother and unto his father's house, I will go up 
and show Pharaoh and say unto him, My brethren and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come unto me. And the men and the men are shepherds, for their trade has been to feed cattle, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? That ye shall say, Your servant's trade has been about cattle from our youth even until now, both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination unto Mitzriah. All right, what does that mean? What, is it, what does it mean? They hate shepherds. They hate people that raise cows. That's like uh, some sort of racial thing. I don't know. Some sort is of it racial or religious? Occupational. I'm saying they're probably religious because they probably worship cows and stuff, so I don't know. I know India dudes worship cows. I don't, I don't really yeah, I mean, know. They have, they have like the giant sphinx, but I don't know why they exactly hate I mean, they have to have cows. They have to have people So there. this was a huge tribe of people that were all coming. That we hate the shepherds. So what do you guys do? Uh, we no, are shepherds. I don't know where it says. Maybe uh, somewhere uh, in Jasher or in the Mexican chapter, but Goshen was like, the grazing land for the shepherds. It was like the biggest, greenest grass there was, and that's why I sent them there instead of anywhere else. Great. Okay, well, everybody, thank you very, very, very much for spending time with us. And again, you guys are obviously our, our virtual family. Um, we live out in the middle of nowhere. We see literally nobody. And so this is the closest we have to interaction with people outside of the tribe. Sounds pretty weird, right? Well, so you guys are our digital family. And... Um, that's, it's great spending time with you. Do you guys have anything else? Read your Bible. Have a great night. Read your Bibles. Um, and study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not, not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Does that mean that you wash, that all food has been made clean? No. Why not? Because Why is that not rightly dividing the word of God? Because the word of God says... How do you rightly you do? divide the word of God? Rightly dividing the word of God is more like a rightly uh, understanding or rightly doing... Uh, is, is putting the law, statutes, and commands of our creator on the cross rightly dividing the word of God? That's like rightly breaking, wrongly breaking. You're only getting a portion of the book. You're getting a small portion of the book. And I hate to break it to everybody out there, but historians that are Greek that are into Greek writings and have studied all of the letters of Brother Shaul, Paul, who has written the majority of the New Testament, most of them are under the uh, belief that these were not the same letters, that more than half of the books that they accredit to Brother Shaul were written by other people. And this was written, a lot of these were written in Greek. And so these guys studied all the letters and how it's almost impossible if you ever write a letter and try to make yourself into somebody else and write a letter it's really really hard so it, it is and when you read these things hebrews is not the same writing as the rest of these books and things of that nature so it's all over the place so if you just uh you know make your entire doctrine what a uh, brother shawl is then technically you make your god brother shawl because if he's wrong then you've done it wrong so this is why we must study ourselves to be sh to be approved okay all right everybody thank you very much all right shalom, all right, shalom. shalom. bye